A few months ago, Coalball, uh, the lighting company, sent me their light, the CL220. It's a bicolor light, so it retails at around £320. And I wanted to use this as a sort of opportunity to experiment with some new lighting setups, showing you stuff that you can achieve with inexpensive equipment. <laughs> It's a really lovely little bicolor light with a range from 2700 Kelvin to 6500. It has a constant 220 watt output, has a Bowens mount, NATO rail for attaching accessories, and comes with a fantastic little carry case. We recently went on a family holiday, so I decided to chuck a load of kit in the back of our car, including this light. And I thought it'd be fun to take a bit of time in one of the evenings and just shoot some stuff with my dad in the garden of the house we're staying in. It had some nice practical backlights that you can see here, these sort of orange garden lights. I wanted to get a moody, Fincher-esque lighting set up. It's shot in the Komodo, I think using the 125mm uh, Vespid. And all I did with this is I set up the coal ball, as you can see here, to one side. Uh, I used the softbox, but then I also just introduced the 5-in-1 reflector next to it, just to provide an extra layer of diffusion. And because these practical lights in the background in the garden were very warm, I set the output of the coal ball light to 3000 Kelvin. On the camera, I set this to around 4,000 Kelvin, just to get a sort of slightly nicer, warmer skin tone. Colbor sent me this additional accessory, which you can purchase for this light, which allows you to connect a V-mount battery. The only limitation of this is that you are limited to 50% uh, output on the light. If I'd had a bit more time and I was taking this a bit more seriously on a professional shoot, then I would have run the light off mains power, but I wanted to test out the V-mount functionality and sort of just keep it nice and quick. Ideally, I would have run it a bit brighter so then I could bring down the exposure in the camera and balance for those background lights which are a bit bright. Sticking that 5 one reflector in front of it, it just softened everything up a bit and sort of reduced the harshness of the shadows, you know, even with that soft box. Another great thing I loved about this light is the app. I could stand behind my camera and monitor the, the shot whilst making adjustments and dialing in stuff if the light remotely on my phone. I've recently been watching this TV show, I think it's on Paramount, it's called Rabbit Hole. It's got Charles Dance and Kiefer Sutherland in. It's a bit of a weird show. Uh, it's kind of like 24 meets The Game by David Fincher. It's a bit silly, but it's alright. But the lighting in it is really nice, and the way it's graded is everything's just like very soft and low contrast, a little bit dreamy. I kind of wanted to have a go achieving something a bit similar to that. So. Also, whilst I was away, I experimented with the cobalt lights and trying to achieve like this very soft, subtle lighting. The aim here was to motivate the lighting setup using the large window behind Steph. So I experimented with bouncing the cobalt off the five in one reflector. And this actually worked a lot better than I expected. It just provided this really beautiful, soft and subtle wrap of light around Steph's face. I think it kind of looked much nicer than what I could have achieved using a softbox. Obviously, bouncing light off materials is not the most efficient way of lighting something because you lose a lot of output, but this cobalt light has plenty of headroom. I think we had the light set up at between 12 and 15%. Again, I was using the app to dial in the intensity of the light and bringing it to the edge of something, you know, that could look like ambient environmental light. You can see here, once I start to pump up the intensity, it just begins to look far too lit and artificial. So I stuck around 12 to 15%, but you know, it's good to know that there's plenty of headroom to play with, even when bouncing against the window light. 
I also found that using the supplied reflector dish gave the best results here, so I'd really recommend making use of that. Uh, this has really helped to focus and control the spill of the light when bouncing it off a uh, reflective surface. Next, I experimented with adjusting the temperature of the light and bringing it down even further. I think it was down to around 3500 Kelvin. And I also really like this too, it kind of added much more colour contrast into the scene with the natural light. And now it kind of just looks like uh, Steph's face is being lit by a tungsten lamp in the room. The soft quality of the bounce here, again, um, just makes it look like ambient room lighting and it, you know, it helps to tie that belief in that it's being lit by um, a warmer room lamp. Here we have another similar setup, this time in our living room. Steph's away at the moment, so I thought that this would be a great opportunity to make some mess and practice some lighting setups. I wanted to build on the previous technique, but this time use a practical lamp to motivate the lighting. So same as before, uh, light on the floor, five and one reflector, and then monitoring the Komodo shot on my iPad, uh, obviously working on my own, and then dialing in the light uh, settings using the phone app. The light is set to around 3000 Kelvin, and then I think the camera is a bit warmer, set to 4,000 Kelvin. And that's just to push a little bit of warmth into the scene. If we drop the camera's white balance down to the same level as the light, then it just creates a much colder scene. And we want to maintain some of the warmth coming from the practical lights. The more we drop that white balance down, the cooler that practical light becomes. So here you can see what it looks like when we turn the cobalt off. Uh, you can see that the camera stopped down. I think we're about f2.8 on the DZO film 125mm lens. Uh, and you can obviously see that the practical light is providing absolutely no level in the scene. Again, we're getting this lovely soft wrap around my face, uh, just using the bounce light. So the back left of the scene is looking a little bit too dark for my liking, looking back at it now, but you know, this was all set up in about 10 minutes. So if I'd had more time and this had been on a professional shoot with more equipment, obviously it would have finessed that. Um, but I did actually chuck in a little Aperture MC light to give uh, a bit of a subtle backlight hair light to me. You can barely see it, but it's just there, just enough level to make a difference. A few months back I was testing out the Speedmaster Cine lenses, um, you can see my review linked here. I wanted a nice elegant lighting setup to show them off, so I got Steph to stand in the hallway of our flats and then I basically just set this light up in the kitchen and again with the reflector dish on I just beamed it into sort of the corner and then sort of balanced the 5-in-1 reflector against it. And then I also draped over the 5-in-1's black fabric just to control the spill of the light and sort of direct it more towards Steph and just avoid too much of that light bouncing around and making the level in the kitchen too hot. The idea here was to sort of light Steph very subtly, not make it look too uh, lit, you know, a sort of more naturalist sort of narrative style scene. There was daylight spilling into the living room behind. Obviously that was a lot colder in colour temperature, provided a bit of colour contrast. And then finally, just to give Steph a little bit of a kick, I added in the little five ray light. Subtle, but it has just really helped uh, pick her out. I really loved experimenting with this light. I actually own the Amaran 200X and that's probably the closest competitor to this Colbor light. And honestly, I wish I'd known about Colbor before um, I purchased the Amaran light because I think this is actually the much better buy. Not only is it cheaper, but it has a higher output. Uh, I think it's generally better designed, so it has like a modular design so you can stack multiple lights together. It has a very affordable V-mount uh, adapter you can purchase. Uh, and it also comes with its own carry case, which criminally the more expensive Amaran light doesn't. One of the things as you begin to level up as a filmmaker or a cinematographer is your control of light and lighting. And one of the great things about this YouTube channel is that it's encouraged me to sort of experiment in my own time and sort of level up my lighting skills. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I really recommend this little light. Thank you so much to Cold War for sending it to me to test out. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please drop them down in the comments down below. But until next time, see ya. Mm -hmm.